flames nearing a home in that area. And moments ago, we saw some residents there. I think you see some residents there now. Um, so we're not quite sure what the situation is there if they have been evacuated. And we're talking about winds that are so much the wild card in all of this and uh, the major driver that, that essentially puts the fire in control and takes the firefighters out of control. High wind warning was in effect for much of today that has since been dropped, but don't let that mislead you because there's still very powerful winds racing through uh, these canyons and passes. And we can bring in Danny Romero to talk about the red flag conditions that's, that persist with right. the single digit humidities and those winds. Right, even though, even though the winds have died down, but still at advisory level, which still means we're gonna see sustained winds 15 to 30 mile per hour range, and we can see gusts up to 45 miles per hour. So those are still pretty strong wind factors. However, in terms of what also is fire conditions, the red flag in effect, uh, the in effect now extended to 4 p.m. tomorrow, more than likely beyond that because Warm air is still in place. The dry, dry conditions with single digit humidity readings are still in place. Those two factors are enough to keep a red flag warning in effect. And with those, uh, with those dry, dry conditions and the warm air here till Monday, even into Tuesday of next week, we can see that red flag extended. Right now it's officially till 4 p.m. tomorrow mm -hmm. for the red flag with the wind advisories in effect through most areas until tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. But we could see everything kind of go yet even beyond that with the, with the fire danger still there. That said, mm -hmm. w when these winds drop down into the single digits, right. it really gives these firefighters a fighting chance yeah. to where they can protect these structures and begin to build a line around a fire because they don't have this spotting that is just right. wreaking havoc on their, on their efforts. Yeah, because those winds are, are picking up those embers and tossing them, you know, a mile farther away. And you just, just when you get containment of one area, all of a sudden another fire breaks out someplace else as the winds carry these embers. And it's, it's the winds that probably have, have had uh, these fires that have jumped those natural uh, fire breaks of freeways and, and fast check drops ahead of the fire line. Those embers just jump over them and start a fire someplace a distance away. So yeah, that's still in place. Once those winds are completely out of the picture, which will, again will not be until tomorrow morning 9 a.m. when we think the wind advisory should be taken off, uh, then yeah, then you're fighting just fires in a dry, warm condition. All right, Danny, thank you. We are just getting word from the American Red Cross about a, another evacuation center at Corona High School. This uh, evacuation center now open at uh, 1150 West 10th Street in Corona for evacuees uh, in that area. Again, this an American Red Cross evacuation center now open. But we have Carlos Grando right now on the ground uh, at Hanson Dam, uh, uh, hopefully with some new information on the Sayer Fire. Carlos? Well, absolutely. We're just talking to Armando Hogan from the L.A. City Fire Department, giving us a few of the updated figures. Uh, really, it's still only a 10% containment at this moment. We've now moved to Hanson Dam. This is where the new command center is, and the reason is because they're expecting a lot of trucks, a lot of personnel from all over the state, and this is really one of the few areas that they can fit so many vehicles. Now, again, they've told us just a short while ago that the fire is still a 10% containment. They were hoping it would move west because that way it would run in to the area of the Cessnon fire a few weeks ago where all that area was burned and really there was no, no place left to burn. But unfortunately, he said, the winds moved it a bit southwest and that moved it into the Knollwood area. That's where that mobile home park and all, some homes did get destroyed by this fire. Uh, the strong winds, they've been strong throughout the day, uh, gusts of 60, 50, 60 miles an hour, pushing the embers a very long distance. And that's why this fire was able to cross the five freeway, which they had hoped would stop it. And it entered that Norwood area. And that's what they were very concerned about. Now the DWP also had to take out two main transmission lines out of service because they were right in the fire area. And there were some rolling blackouts for a while, but now the city of Los Angeles is urging people to conserve power and water. Okay. And fire department was so overwhelmed we didn't in that have area there that they had a 300 pound woman that had that was an invalid, was unable to exit off of her bed, and we physically removed her and, and took her out via an ambulance. So I, I can personally tell you that there was fire in the window of her bedroom while we were doing this. This is not a matter for a deputy chief or, or, or a command officer or, or a fire command to be doing, but this was the matter of what was needed to be done. And, and I don't say that in anything other than to say that I, we're very sensitive to the fact that the nature of this fire.